Hello, my name is Sven Breitkopf. I'm uh, working uh, at Active Fiber Systems, uh, which is a company based in Jena, Germany. And I'm going to talk about ultra compact, widely tunable, dual wavelength fiber based sources for cars and SRS imaging. Um, first of all, I think the CARS process is quite familiar for most of you, so uh, I don't have to get into the detail. Uh, the important thing is what you basically do. You probe vibrational molecule resonances and this allows you to obtain chemical information so you can distinguish between different chemicals uh, due to their different resonances. And it has a nonlinear response, which is important if you aim for 3D imaging capabilities because uh, you can distinguish between the depth in the tissue due to the nonlinear response, which is very narrow. And it allows the microscopy of living cells and also re real-time in vivo imaging. So all of this are strong arguments to use it in the clinical environment. Of course, they have some demands on the light source. So it must have picosecond pulses, kilowatt peak power, uh, nothing too challenging there. But it needs to address energies, or it needs to be able to address energies between 900 or even lower, up to 3000 or even higher inverse centimeters. So basically, you want a large tuning range for your wavelength pairs, and at the same time, it must be in a window that's suitable for microscopes. So this combination is a bit challenging. And uh, to distinguish between the different chemicals, between the resonances, you want to have a small spectral bandwidth. So uh, you need to have uh, typically a very small bandwidth. And uh, of course, in the end, the medical doctor is going to use it. So it must enable turnkey operation because it cannot be too complex uh, if someone wants to use it in the clinical environment. Yeah, as I said, um, this is challenging to distinguish between lipids and proteins, for example. And typically, uh, laser systems that have been used over the last years for such purposes are bulky picosecond oscillators, amplifiers, and uh, subsequent OPOs or OPAs. And these are valuable systems in research environments because of their flexibility. They are widely tunable and you can change a lot. Um, but in the end, they are very complex, they are alignment sensitive, and they are expensive. They are also sensitive to the environment, so um, you need some sort of controlled environment because the temperature has an influence. Uh, since the temperature is the thing you are using to tune the wavelength as, uh, wavelength as well, so this also is one reason why you have a rather slow tuning speed. So while they have their definite, definitely their pros, uh, they also introduce some limitations to the technique. And um, yeah, since our company is called Active Fiber Systems, uh, and basically uh, we usually we use uh, fibers to solve problems, uh, we thought there might be a fiber approach to solve to solve this as well. So um, yeah, the company itself it was founded 12 years ago, and uh, the focus is to have a rapid transition from research systems into reliable, commercially available systems. Our main markets are research, so fundamental research, materials processing, life science. And uh, we are a technological leader, leader for high-power ultra-fast fiber lasers. Our lab space um, is uh, more than 1,500 square meters by now, um, and the employee count has, uh, has increased quite a lot over the last years. Um, Okay, so among our portfolio of femtosecond fiber lasers at very high power levels up to kilowatt range, uh, average power levels up to kilowatt range, um, we have this one uh, system that is a dual wavelength picosecond source for nonlinear microscopy. And I would like to show how this source was developed and what's the uh, thoughts behind it. So basically, fibers have lots of advantages. Yeah? I guess uh, you all are familiar with fiber lasers uh, somehow. So they are very stable, they are reliable. Um, they are capable to uh, achieve very high average powers, which is not so important for this, part, uh, this system, but in general. And many applications in communications, material studies, high field physics uh, rely heavily on fiber lasers nowadays. So the idea was to have everything that is necessary to uh, build such a car source based on fibers. So the pulse generation, the amplification, and also the generation of the wavelength pairs. And this is done by using four-wave mixing, as I will show you. Four-wave mixing, in general, you have a pump, uh, pump light, 
which in our case uh, is uh, done by 1030 nanometer fiber laser, a terbium doped fiber laser, and you generate uh, light in the visible range and in the infrared range. And this suits ideally to the requirements we have for cars. So we thought, why not uh, try it out? And this was back at the university, at the Institute of Applied Physics, uh, nine years ago by now. And this is a very simple laboratory setup that was done for the first CARS experiments. And on the uh, right you can see a photonic crystal fiber that is used for, uh, used for the uh, four-wave mixing process. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, if you take a look at it closely, um, um, in four-wave mixing you can generate uh, changing the pump wavelength, right? Yeah, between uh, or by a few nanometers. In this case, uh, 30 nanometers enables you to change the output wavelength of the system, right? So the signal wavelength, and uh, the difference between the both is basically your energy difference, which is your car's signal, which is what you need to address the resonances. So by tuning the pump wavelength a little bit, you can have a very big difference in the um, in the inverse centimeter range for the resonances. Yeah, the source was used and um, implemented in the microscope. So um, basically here's the, the setup for this microscope, which was done by the Leibniz uh, IPHT back then. And uh, yeah, basically there are lots of elements in here, but what you do, you filter out the unwanted light, um, you can adjust the power level on the sample, uh, you generate your field of view, which is in this case one by one millimeter, and um, this was all implemented in a mobile microscope station, which you can see uh, behind me here. And this microscope station was actually used in uh, clinics and for many tests in many environments. And here you can, for example, see some images um, uh, acquired by uh, cars, um, by the second harmonic generation or two photon excitation, and a composite of both of them. And this already allowed you to distinguish between different parts. However, um, it was an all-fiber solution, but the chemical resolution was not really very high and um, the tunability was very limited by then. So what could you do to improve it? Um, the idea was to go from an optical parametric generation scheme, which the fiber-based scheme I showed before was, to an optic par optical parametric amplifier or uh, oscillation scheme. So in this case, uh, we were using a pulse fiber laser and a CW titanium sapphire laser. And um, using them combined enabled us to decrease the bandwidth of a signal and increase the spectral cast res resolution dramatically. So we achieved below one inverse centimeter. So this also had an easy tunability by changing the seed wavelength and um, gave you a bit more flexibility and much narrower bandwidth. So uh, this is an image acquired with uh, this system of a human perivascular tissue. And you can clearly distinguish between the lipids and the proteins. So the bandwidth was narrow enough to easily see the different uh, Raman responses. So this was definitely a step in the right direction. So it wasn't all fiber anymore, but it has a, had a high chemical resolution and the right tunability, rather wide. Um, so the next step, obviously, is to think about a scheme that combines all of this. So you want to have a fiber-based, uh, four-wavelength mixing optical parametric oscillator. The idea is to use self-seeding of the signal. So instead of an um, optical parametric generation, you have an optical parametric oscillator. Um, so of course you need to uh, have a resonant uh, signal feedback into the cavity. So you need some delay fiber lots of technical details but in the end um, we were able to achieve this so instead of having a laser and um, generating your second harmonic having an optical parametric process to generate the DFG and get to your experiment which involves a lot of free space it was possible to have it all fiber integrated so you start with the fiber laser you have a fiber OPO afterwards and you can go directly onto your experiment so the four-wave mixing happens in the fiber. So that, this was really simplified. And um, the oscillator, of course, that's a bit of a challenge, must be tunable. So since you want to address a different wavelength, you must tune your pump wavelength. 
So uh, this was realized and uh, here you can see the measurement. So we achieved a tunability between 1050 nanometers and 1065 or 70 nanometers, which is completely sufficient to address a very wide range of um, energies. Okay, so uh, um, combined, if we summarize this part, uh, you can see the, the oscillator has to be resonant, you have um, some positive dispersion to, for the delay, and uh, you need to send a feedback into the cavity, which acts as a passive narrowband filter. And this enabled us to achieve resolutions below 5 inverse centimeters. Also, the conversion efficiency was quite high, which is important for, for the output power in the end. The peak power was uh, within what's required, as well as the addressable Raman resonances. And here you can see a measurement of uh, this system. So if you change the pump wavelength in the range of 1030 to 1060 nanometers, you can change the, um, yeah, you change the signal and the idler output uh, correspondingly, and you can cover quite a l large range of different um, yeah, Raman resonances. Um, it's important to notice that uh, what's called pump wavelength, um, the terbium laser, which is the pump for the four-wave mixing, ends up being the car's Stokes signal, while the signal generated in the four-wave mixing ends up being the car's pump. So it's important to not get these confused. Yeah, and if we take a look at some exemplary measurements uh, of the source output, uh, you can see that on the upper right uh, the pump power and the upper left you can see the generated signal and at the same time uh, on the graph below on the lower left you see the average power of the stokes and of the pump signals which uh, are quite high uh, certainly high enough for most applications if it is too high you will burn your tissue anyway so um, there's not not this big requirement regarding average power and um, you can see the bandwidth and uh, of course there are some influences there so you can see it has a higher uh, a larger wider bandwidth for the short wave numbers which is a bit limiting um, if you want to look at resonances in that range but typically um, you're fine there and for the higher resonances you have a very narrow bandwidth below five inverse centimeters which is great to distinguish between lipids and proteins for example and here, yeah, one image that we were able to capture with uh, the setup is shown here. So it's a gray and white matter of a probe brain. And uh, also here you can see uh, a difference between lipids and proteins. So um, it was possible to use this narrow bandwidth source to finally generate a car signal that corresponded to what we had in mind. So uh, it is an all fiber source with a turnkey operation. It has a high chemical resolution and it has a wide tunability. Yeah, so this is uh, basically what we put into a product afterwards, and you can see an image of the of the housing. I also have one here with me. So we have different types of housings, uh, but as you can see, it is very compact. It is small. It fits in every microscopy station, and it can be customized uh, regarding the interfaces and uh, things like this. Okay, this is uh, fiber coupled as well and um, you can address a broad range of different resonances. And the most important thing is the tuning speed is very fast because you don't have to change the temperature of a crystal, you don't have to uh, do a lot of things to tune the pump wavelength. You can um, really quickly tune it within the oscillator. So uh, within a few seconds you can cover the entire energy range, so this increases your uh, acquisition time dramatically. Here are some specifications of these systems. Of course, uh, you don't have to take a look at them in detail now, but basically we have a CARS version um, with high resolution, with lower resolution, uh, depending on what you're aiming for. And we also have a SRS, an SRS version, a stimulated Raman spectroscopy. Here it is particularly important to have a relative intensity noise that's very low, because you cannot allow for, for background, for non-resonant background. And we also have a solution for this uh, application. Yeah, of course, uh, it's not the end. So we are, uh, this is an ongoing research topic at Active Fiber Systems. Um, we have a project that's called Terra Optic. Uh, together with, uh, with some partners, we're working on integrating this uh, car source together with a surgery laser. So basically, you can use an endoscope, you can take a look 
on the, for example, cancer, uh, cancer cells, and you can immediately remove them using this uh, laser surgery. So, a very compact and very uh, efficient approach on this topic. And um, as well, another project that has just started is uh, CRIMSON, which is Coherent Raman Imaging for the Molecular Study of the Origin of Diseases. And um, it aims to have a label-free, non-invasive imaging technique, both of which is CARS, and uh, should be driven by a fiber-based source to be easily integrated in microscopes. And um, it aims to take a look at different diseases and uh, be used in the clinical environment for fast and easy uh, acquisition of images. This project is also a European project and uh, we are working on it with a lot of partners from all over Europe. Okay, thank you for your attention and if you have any uh, questions uh, we are happy to answer them after the talk and you can also take a look at our homepage and learn more about the systems that are available. Thank you.